places where nothing should survive. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tall Tannic. I'm your host, Alexa. In the famous words of Jeff Goldblum, life finds a way. Even in these hostile locations, life is thriving. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss an upload. So if life can survive in these environments, do you think that there may be life on other planets? Make sure to let me know your theories in the comments down below and let's get into it. Earth's Upper Atmosphere Recently, scientists have discovered that billions and billions of microbes have joined the Mile High Club, and we didn't even realize they were living in a giant bubble above our planet. The exact location is the stratosphere, about six miles above the Earth, where oxygen is low and temperatures are too. The living microbes got there by hitching a ride on massive dust storms from deserts like the Sahara. These storms displace millions of tons of soil each year, and some of it makes it all the way to space. Scientists have collected desert sand as high as 60,000 feet. So what exactly were these living creatures? Well, samples of stratosphere dust have contained hundreds of bacteria, fungi, and viruses, including many pathogens harmful to humans like Staphylococcus, responsible for staph infections, Legionella, which causes Legionnaire's disease, and even microbes that cause lung diseases when inhaled. Turns out when you wish upon a star, you might really just be wishing upon a sparkly new superbug virus. Yellowstone's Hot Springs The hot springs in Yellowstone are pretty hostile, with water near boiling point and water so acidic it can dissolve nails. It doesn't seem like a place any living creature would choose to live, but these boiling pools of acid contain a thriving ecosystem of creatures that actually give it its unique vivid colors. In fact, Yellowstone Park hosts the greatest known diversity of archaea, which is a simple, single-celled organism without nuclei. These little heat-loving viruses thrive in hot environments like volcanoes and, well, hot springs. The tiny critters responsible for the rainbow colors around the geysers are Thermus aquaticus. Other local microbes eat a hardcore diet of hydrogen. Photosynthesizing bacteria have also been discovered. La Brea Tar Pits most of us thought the last thing that lived in the La Brea tar pits died with the end of the Ice Age, but scientists have discovered whole new species of bacteria with some useful superpowers thriving in the tar pits today. The tar pits wouldn't be most living organisms' first choice for accommodation. The pits are a boiling mix of heavy oil and natural asphalt bubbling slowly in the middle of West Hollywood. I mean, can you imagine the rent alone? These super survivor bacteria were probably trapped in the soil about 28,000 years ago, and three of the strains are previously undiscovered enzymes that can naturally break down petroleum. But there are hundreds of new species of bacteria that have emerged from the bubbling tar which have unusual properties. These living organisms survive in heavy oil mixtures containing highly toxic chemicals. Plus, the bacteria survive with no water and little to no oxygen. It seems these bacteria were most likely family of soil microorganisms that were trapped in the asphalt that then adapted to the environment they found themselves in. Now scientists are unpacking how these bacteria could be used to solve some of our biggest problems, from cleaning up oil spills to new medicines, as well as biofuels as an alternative energy source, there are many useful applications for these bacteria. The Bottom of the Deep Blue Sea In the deepest regions of the ocean, there are myriad challenges to overcome if you want to survive. We wouldn't stand a chance against the crushing high pressure caused by the water above, very little oxygen, and scalding heat from hydrothermal vents on the sea floor. And then there's the darkness. But despite these conditions, there are hundreds of creatures living their best lives on the ocean floor. In the Pacific Ocean, underwater hot springs teem with life. Tube worms, giant clams, and eyeless shrimp all call it home. They have specially adapted to live and thrive despite the harsh environment. Then the depths also house a number of bacteria as local residents. At bone-crushing high pressures with low oxygen supply, they have adapted to community living and engage in extracellular electron transfer that creates an electric current that helps couple biochemical processes. Basically, they share the little oxygen available to stay alive. 
ice ice baby. Animals don't have warm socks to pull up and can't exactly flick a switch to turn on underfloor heating, so when it comes to below freezing temperatures, they need to adapt to survive. One of the most common survival adaptations is natural antifreeze, which insects and spiders produce to remain mobile and not freeze solid when the mercury drops below zero. The Arctic fly's larvae can be chilled to negative 76 Fahrenheit and survive. Another way frogs, newts, and turtles hack the big freeze is by controlling where ice forms in their bodies. They need to maintain a balance of only 50% of their body turning to ice and then ensure that it only forms outside of cells by squeezing the water out of their cells and organs to shrink them. Then the water outside the organs and cells freezes so that crystals only form around organs and between muscle fibers. Even mammals can adapt to freezing in similar ways. The Arctic ground squirrel can lower their body temperature to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, that's negative two degrees Celsius, by eliminating body materials that could form ice crystals. This unique adaptation is called super cooling. Radioactive waste. Radiation is measured in grays. 10 grays will kill a person. So where there have been major nuclear spills, it is considered a non-livable area. But despite the toxic waste, there are many living organisms thriving in these environments. One of them is the bacteria Dinococcus radiodurans that can be exposed to up to 5,000 grays of radiation without effect. It can even withstand up to 15,000 grays, making it the world's toughest bacterium. When you think of radioactively contaminated places, it inspires visions of barren land but actually soy flourishes in toxically high radiation levels. Around Chernobyl, soy crops are proving their strengths and producing healthy offspring. Scientists are now using this example to understand how they are surviving in this hostile environment to be able to engineer plants that can withstand drought conditions and other tough conditions. Volcanoes. Volcano temperatures can range from below zero at negative 10 degrees Celsius up to a smoking 58 degrees Celsius just in one day. But what is pretty unbelievable is that there are microbes that are able to survive these massive temperature fluctuations and even thrive by living off a diet of lethal substances like carbon monoxide. All by myself. Deep inside the hot passages of a gold mine in South Africa lives possibly the most solitary species in the world. It is two miles down and 140 degrees Fahrenheit hot. This is what the Candidatus desulfuridus audaxviator calls home. This lonely bacterium seems like an anomaly. If it is the only native living creature discovered here, then what does it eat? This self-sufficient bacteria lives on sulfate and processes its own nitrogen nitrogen, meaning it can continue its hermit-like existence for all eternity. Hitchin' a Ride No matter how clean you think you are, your body is still crawling with foreign microbes. So when NASA sends any landing probe into space, they need to do their best to limit the contaminants that could spread anywhere they land. To do this, they use plasma and radiation, then place them in air and water-filled rooms to clean every part of anything going into space. Despite all of this, there are still microbes that survive this royal treatment of cleaning. By surviving this thorough cleanse, these sneaky microbes have just secured themselves a ticket to the moon. The Galapagos Islands when you think of the Galapagos Islands, you probably think of Darwin and a well-stocked population of finches and other species the evolutionary scientist studied. What made the Galapagos Islands such a perfect backdrop for the study was that these islands were completely inhospitable when they first formed. The island rose from the tops of active volcanoes in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The volcano's heat would have completely sterilized the volcanic rock at the high temperatures of molten lava, ensuring that nothing living would have survived the process of formation. So this sterile, barren, and isolated environment must have been a pretty lonely place to land on. But if you look at them today, the islands now look like a paradise full of plants and living creatures. So what happened that changed these islands from barren to bountiful? It's been discovered that everything growing there are plants with airborne seeds, so they arrived by wind. Then the rest floated over, and of course, the famous finches flew. Probably one of the hard to explain creatures found on the island is the giant tortoise. It's not a swimmer like a turtle, so it's theorized that it arrived on the island on a raft of vegetation that deposited it onto its new home. Climate change. 
Not everything is dying in a warmer global condition. Some things are thriving. With the melting of permafrost as temperatures rise, scientists fear the release of zombie pathogens that have been frozen in ice for hundreds or thousands of years that will re-emerge as the ice melts. Also, warming temperatures are a more hospitable environment for disease-spreading insects like mosquitoes. An example of this is the Zika virus carried by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Zika is a virus that causes no symptoms or mild fever and rash in adults, but rather is devastating when it infects pregnant women, causing miscarriage and microcephaly in fetuses. Hanging by a thread Death Valley is hostile. It's not only the driest and hottest place in the U.S., but also the lowest place. 10,000 years ago, the area's lakes dried up and most of the aquatic inhabitants did not survive. But seven species of pupfish are the last survivors of the lakes, holding on by eking out an existence in the remaining water. The pupfish can be found in salt marshes, springs, and an underground aquifer called the Devil's Hole. However, they might be on their last few generations because in 2006, there were only 38 found in Devil's Hole, and they are one of the rarest animals in the world. Danakil Desert A completely inhospitable place is the Danakil Desert in Ethiopia, and even here, in the middle of nowhere, you will find life. Rainwater and seawater from the coast are heated by the magma and come to the surface, bringing with it many different salt solutions. Life is not going to prosper here, but despite the heavy salt solutions, the salty, iron-rich crusts, sulfates, and iron oxides, scientists have collected samples of bacteria. Can you add to our list of places where things grow that almost seem impossible? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. 1. Cold Shoulder You'd struggle to find somewhere colder on Earth than the Antarctic and the Arctic. For months on end, the Antarctic inhabitants live at temperatures of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit with little to no sun. The survival tactics of polar-dwelling creatures are adapted to scrape through the long winter without a decent food supply, below zero temps, and all the while incubating eggs to ensure their species survives. The Antarctic emperor penguin drops its metabolic rate by a quarter of normal, and their core temperatures by a few degrees to help them survive the long winter. Even more spectacular at survival skills lives on the other side of the Earth, in the Arctic, the spectacled eider, a rare duck native to open water. Scientists were stumped until recently when it came to how this duck survived the sea freezing over, cutting it off from open water. Finally, they observed the eiders huddling together in cracks between plates of sea ice, churning up the water to ensure it doesn't freeze closed so they can dive for clams and feed through the winter. Isn't nature remarkable?